I remember that day I was driving down Chalmers Street, just two blocks from here. And I was at the corner of Chalmers and the second. And there I see a nice Jewish boy just moved into campus the first week of school where they have nothing to do other than parties. And there I see a boy who I heard from friends might be coming to campus, making his way into the fraternity. We roll down my window. And the car pulls up and this guy pulls down the window with the fedora, with the beard. <laughs> and with a warm smile. Like, Sam, welcome to campus. It's so great to see you. That was not something I was expecting to come rolling up out of nowhere on my way, you know, just to continue, continue the party and keeping the party going. We invited him to Shabbos. He wasn't sure if he was gonna come. He told me later on, ha, here he came to campus to run away from it all. His first day, he bumps into the rabbi, but he came by. You seem cool, you seem trustworthy. Uh, I definitely am open and interested in coming by and experiencing Shabbos with you and seeing what you're all about. So, boy, I might have gone to Jewish schools. Might have gone to Jewish high school. Might have gone to Yeshiva in Israel. But he told me that Friday night he came by and he stayed after dinner to Fabring. I mean, Fabring till 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't leave his house that Friday night. I slept on the couch. We had such a good time. And uh, I stayed up all night with him, picking his brain and singing with him, and the energy was great. My impression of Judaism was never, let's get rowdy, let's have fun. It was always like, this is boring, let's go home. <laughs> so <laughs> this was something new to me, something refreshing to me. I really enjoyed it. Fell asleep on the couch, woke up for davening. And with all his history, that was the first Shabbos he kept in his life. Not in Eretz Yisrael, not in his Jewish high school, but in the place that he went to run away from it all. And why? Because someone reached out to him. Echad, one student, one invitation, one experience, and he's been keeping Shabbos since. When I moved to New York, I got involved with Rev. Dov Yona Korn at Chabad House Bowery, who was uh, an amazing personality and someone I just naturally connected to. He had introduced me to a gentleman that was running an organization. His name was Yoni Greenwald and he was running this building in the East Village called the Brownstone. There was a very cool Jewish center, a lot of events for like birthright type students. After I had graduated and gotten married, Yoni had reached out to me and asked me if I would take over for him and live in that building and run that center and run his community. It was not on my radar. I'm not a rabbi. I'm, I never thought of myself as necessarily a Jewish leader. You never know what one experience is gonna do to you. I'm trying to escape my religious practice by going to University of Illinois, enter stage right, the rabbi pulls up and invites me for Shabbos. And next thing you know, I'm running this Jewish center in the East Village of Manhattan with thousands of young Jews rolling through our door and I'm their connecting point. I was living in the West Village at the time and a gentleman that I uh, was working with invited me to the Brownstone. And I remember I showed up to the Brownstone. It was this uh, beautiful four-story building in a great location and we went up to the second floor, which is the Brownstones, sort of like uh, one of their event areas. And there was one extremely long Shabbat table, had about 75 people there call it. So at that Shabbat meal is, the, is when I met Sam. And Sam has a, this amazing presence. He has this amazing first impression. He's very gracious, he's very positive. Thank me for hosting with the Brownstone. I thanked him for being there and started showing up at more of our events and I started to get to know him. I realized that Isaac just kept coming back. He kept looking for more. I've had an opportunity to now be part of a Jewish organization's board where we're inviting more Jews to come and get more involved. I've grown in my Judaism many times because of him. He's hosted me personally in his home. I've gone to synagogue with him. Uh, he was actually one of the guys that, taught, that told me about a Jewish advocacy class that was hosted on the second floor of his organization, the Brownstone. And I attended that class and I could confidently say that I would not be living in Israel now if it wasn't for what I learned in that class. So this is just another example of second, third, fourth degree effects of, of one mitzvah or one human just having an impact on someone, just like the way Sam had an impact on me. Isaac got involved through Sam's work. Sam got involved through that interaction that we had on the street corner. Now Isaac's involved in trying to get others involved. It doesn't end. Something that starts in Champaign, Illinois of Reb David, uh, I guess, uh, bringing me out of the frat house and into the Chabad house. It w was kind of something that was meant to happen so that I could run the Brownstone and connect with Isaac. That one Shabbos meal was something that completely changed the whole direction of my life. 
that impacted me to then impact other Jews and try and get them to come to the brownstone. Then they brought their friends. It's a, it's a total trickle effect. Every mitzvah of every size by every and any Jew is preparing the world for Mashiach. The value of every single yet. Us doing our mitzvah, our one little contribution, however small it might be, it's not small. It's huge. You could do this too. You are Sam. You are Isaac. You are David. It's your script. It's just one Shabbos. Just one person. One mitzvah. One moment. And you could change the world and bring Mashiach.